The title of Black Clover Chapter 364, Ready for Death, is unsettlingly accurate. Prepare yourselves because this was a crazy one. To kick things off, we have a look at the conversation the Black Bulls had with the Witch Queen before Kira's invasion of the forest. As they prepared for the impending attack, the Witch Queen expressed that according to her divinations, if they failed to do their part in this upcoming battle, it would be the end of the world as they know it. Which is just about as tense as the situation could ever get, and that stress was clearly written all over Luck and Magna's faces. Noct would then deduce that considering how far Lucius went to remove Asta from the equation, the young Black Bull must be his ultimate weakness, and therefore, their greatest weapon. This is something we've gotten a glimpse of with Lucius's previous predictions of the future. In all the possible timelines without Asta, things are far easier for the False Wizard King. But in this one, where Asta has changed the lives of many, there are some unpredictable variables at play. For instance, you have characters like Yuno, who are far stronger in this timeline than in any other. Ultimately, it's up to the Black Bulls to ensure that the Door of Fate ritual succeeds, no matter the cost. Asta is a non-negotiable element in this conflict. Even with him, their chances of victory remain slim. But a chance is far better than no chance at all. One way or another, they would buy Finral, Vanessa, Dorothy, the Witch Queen, and the other witches supporting them all the time they possibly could. They all understood that the opponent they now faced in the form of Kira was far stronger than even a supreme devil. And this totally tracks. Kira's scale magic was already enough to shut down their entire squad in one fell swoop. And as a royal, his mana levels were already way above average. Now, thanks to Lucius turning him into a paladin, he has access to a purified devil's power, which the details of are still unknown to us. We know that he was the first of Lucius's soul-shifted victims, but exactly what sort of devil he may now be hosting is still a mystery. I can only imagine it's a supreme devil at least, but there's still the question of what its magic type might be. And it's that big question mark that makes things a lot scarier. The many members of the Black Bulls could all be seen rushing onto the front lines. They were all sweating in anticipation of what was bound to be more than a tough fight. But at the same time, they knew that they were the only ones who were up to the task. They needed to protect the ones executing the ritual, even if it happened to be at the cost of their own lives. Facing these resisting forces, Kira immediately opted to unleash his new spell, Scale Dominate. It's thanks to this that he is now able to create such a massive scale. By tipping it in his favor, he can shift, control, or negate the mana around him, including incoming spells. To counter this, the Black Bulls turn to Henry's magic power absorption. Thanks to Gordon's assistance, they would have a shot at shutting down Kira's scales. This is the same sort of combination effort we saw during the Spade Kingdom invasion arc. With Gordon's advanced curse control, by placing his hand on Henry's shoulder, they're able to turn his curse into a blessing that saps mana at an accelerated rate. Just then, Kira unveiled a new sword and declared that this was judgment. And with a single distant slash, he completely obliterated the raging Black Bull. This is an obscene display of power, considering how much work this giant bull was able to put in last time we saw it. And just like that, the Black Bulls are now all homeless. Although I suppose that's the least of their worries at the moment. As his opponents teetered on the brink of death, Kira became rather philosophical. According to him, a scale without a sword is pointless. Which is to say that rules hardly possess any meaning at all without the might to enforce them. Then that a sword without a scale is simply violence. Again, very true and also pretty self-explanatory. Lastly, he felt that a scale without a sword was what is known as justice. It's very interesting to see how becoming a paladin impacts a mage's personality and thought process. Out of all that we've seen so far, Kira has probably changed the least. Besides his newfound strength and shifted allegiances, you can't tell me that this isn't the same exact person. But even if Henry and Gordon were both staring death in the face, they had no plans of letting up. They'd keep on draining his magic for as long as they could. And thanks to Grey's healing, this was something they could reasonably do despite the damage. Now, Nocta is clearly not playing around. Right out of the gate, instead of utilizing the power of a single Devil Devil Union mode, he opted to make use of his Kindness and Fellas Fusion form. And with that, an absolute swarm of shadowy clones closed in on their brightly illuminated target like a pack of hungry predators. And although it's not applicable in this fight, 
I wonder how many clones could be made between a combination of Gauche's mirror magic and Nox's shadow magic. The guardian angels that were accompanying Kira on his divine mission unleashed a round of concentrated beams at their targets. The Black Bulls immediately went to work against them. Nero sealed one, while Zora absorbed another thanks to his trap magic. Grey was on Lux's back, while Charmu was on the nose of her hulking sheep. Everyone's favorite attack duo was in hot pursuit. Magna has a copy of Grey on his back too, and managed to destroy one of the lower captain level constructs. Luck did the very same to another, but during these attacks, they were both directly hit by destructive blasts of mana. But despite the damage, the mad dog and crazy cat of the Black Bulls did not let up for even a moment and just kept on laughing as blood spilled from their faces. Honestly, I was a bit surprised by this exchange. At first, I would have expected Luck to have been a lot faster and far more lethal here on account of how effective he was against several middle tier devils before thanks to this form. While on the other hand, Magna being able to accomplish a similar feat with no added setup was a bit shocking in the opposite way, since I didn't expect him to so easily match Luck like this despite the gap in their magical abilities. Regardless, I'm happy to see them being badasses. And at this point, Grey was all over the battlefield. Thanks to Gauche's mirror magic, she was able to support everyone on the field. And together, they put in that work against the Guardian Angels and removed them from play pretty quickly, much to the surprise of Kira. But the Paladin easily raked across the flesh of both Zora and Noct when they came too close causing their blood to spill in a concerning spray. But like a pack of unrelenting zombies, the Black Bulls unleashed a heaven-splitting battle cry in refusal of failure. Kira couldn't fathom the foolishness of their suicidal attempts at harming him. Observing the ongoing scene, he noticed the two most problematic elements. Grey was on everyone's backs and restoring them, while Gauche, as previously stated, was using his mirror magic to multiply her. Grey's looking a bit tired, and Gauche's mirror eye is bleeding. Now, mind you, everything we're seeing, no matter how impressive, is only a fraction of what these Black Bulls can really do. They are all suffering the effects of Scale Dominate right now, which explains Luck's circumstance from earlier. But really, think about that. With how well they're doing despite the circumstances, you could probably make the argument that every member of this guild is already captain level. We are looking at the modern day Aqua Deer. Well, not technically the modern day Aqua Deer led by Rill, but rather an even more impressive version of the Aqua Deer led by Julius that once had Yami, William, and Morgan. Which is such an insane turnaround from the Black Bulls being seen as the worst guild in the Clover Kingdom. Forget saving the kingdom, the entire world is depending on the outcome of this battle. But in the blink of an eye, Kira was face to face with a little lamb chef. He had found the one that was holding their team together. Terrified, the disguise was removed and revealed the real Grey's position. Magna called out to his friend from behind. The paladin lifted his mighty blade as the mirror behind Grey began to be displaced. The mirror mage switched places with it and attempted to push Grey out of the way, but it was no use. They had both been severely wounded. Things are not looking good. Inside, Finra was doing his absolute best to complete the ritual. All they needed was a little bit more time to get the job done. Vanessa felt the stress of the situation too, and could only pray that her friends would be able to hang on for just a little while longer. But unfortunately, Grey and Gauss were already done for and laid on the ground dying. The other Black Bulls looked on in devastating horror as the original Paladin declared that it was all over. In the blink of an eye, they'd all been simultaneously wiped out. Over in Hino Country, Asta was yelling out towards Ryuya, questioning what was going on. He wondered how his friends were doing, but struggled to complete his sentence. Ryuya remained focused on the power of his all-seeing eye and remained silent and tense. Asta was shaking with concern and helplessness as he thought of them. Just then, Nero came in clutch with her magic sealing ability. Kira observed as the blood drained from their stumbling bodies. And just like we anticipated, Nero has successfully sealed their pain, and now, even as the shadow of death lurches towards them, they refuse to fold and remain indomitable. The Black Bulls are not done yet. This panel goes way too hard. Tabata is really in his bag right now. 
Thankfully for them, the win condition is not necessarily Kira's defeat. All they really need to do is stall him. Another thing worth noting here is that we have seen everyone put in work here, except for Charmy. Sure, she's present. Sure, she's fighting alongside them all. But it's all too clear to me that she is being kept in reserve. Based on her placement in these panels, based on her overall lack of emphasis, I think it is safe to say that her time to shine is approaching. And after waiting since, what, the elf invasion arc? I absolutely need it. Hopefully I'm not the only one feeling that way, and you guys can let me know if you do in the comments. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching, and have an awesome day. I love you.